Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am in the workshop of a affordable model railroads in Humboldt, Tennessee. And I am working on an end scale layout. You may recognize it when you see it because part of it is the same layout that I designed and posted on this channel a few months ago. I've already been here one day already, but I didn't get a chance to take any pictures yesterday. So let's turn the camera around and take a look at what I'm doing. Here is the bench work for a large end scale layout. It's not quite the same as the one that I posted the design for earlier. The layout did get uh, redesigned because the customer decided the, the complex levels on the other one was too expensive. This one is a lot cheaper to build with most of the main layout being on one level with just minimal grade separation. And here is a scenic section which is not that much different from what I drew. One of the continuous loops that the customer wanted has been severed and turned into a switch back down to the mine area. Yesterday when I got here there was just the one layer of foam and this bench work was flat. I've terraced it on three different levels to allow the switch back down to the mine and also added separate bench work for the high level logging area. I had to cut out the lower level and raise it up on plywood because we would not have been able to control turnouts through eight inches of foam. So there's now these holes through the bottom of the bench work allowing access to the switch machines which can be mounted under this plywood. Not quite sure how much I'm going to get done today. There's no one else in the shop and I'm going to have to start searching for things and I really don't know where everything is stored. The first thing I'm going to need is the grade risers for the logging line and the switch back down here. So I'm going to just turn the camera off and I'm going to look for all those bits that I need. Hopefully I can find them without too much wasted time. Well, this is what the section looks like after a couple more hours. I've got all the grades in. Next thing I have to do is start laying the roadbed. I'm not sure if this is enough here. I just grabbed the handful and I'll see how far it goes. Well, two more hours have passed and I have all the roadbed glued down. I have to excuse the noise. This workshop is hotter than hell. And I had to turn the AC on. I was sweltering in the heat. With all the road bed is down, next it's on to track laying. I'm using the Pico Code 80 track components. They have two types of flex track here. They have the concrete ties for the high level main line, the wooden ties for everything else, and a big box of assorted turnouts. Ironically, this rail in N scale is larger than what I normally use for my own layout in HO. But that's what the customer specified. So I'm going to get back to work and I'll check in with you again later. Well, day two has come to an end. And I have got all the track laid on the lower level. There are no feeders in yet. and it stops here where the pliers are. I've got to find the soldering iron so that I can do that joint while it's still on the straight and then curve it. Now you may notice that there are a few areas where I have deviated from the original plan, most noticeably in the alignment of this low level main line. I have moved it about four inches further forward when faced with a full-size 3D rendition of the layout, sometimes better ideas come to light than can be seen on a small-scale two-dimensional plan. And here, with the different elevations, it made more sense to move this track a lot closer to this, the mine switchbacks, giving me more room for the slope behind it to get up to the high level. 
both ends of this track here I've also moved put them on a little bit of a curve at this end I also moved it because it was rather close to the high level and that's about eight inches higher up so I wanted a little bit more clearance there and also putting those little curves in the ends adds to the interest rather than just a straight piece of track I've never used Pico end scale turnouts before I found them fairly easy to lay one thing I did notice is that here where the track goes in you've got to trim the ties otherwise you can't get them in but that will not notice once it's been ballasted also I struggled to pick up the end scale rail joiners with my very over scale fingers eventually I got the hang of it though well here I am halfway through day three I have now laid as much of the track in this area as I can I've been running cars over it just to check make sure everything runs smoothly and it does I don't have any power on it yet I'm not actually quite sure what color he wants the feeders on this section so rather than guess I'm just leaving it out for now I've got all the wood tied stuff on the branch lines and the concrete ties on the main line at the back I'm actually quite fortunate that I'm even able to be here to do it today yesterday was almost my last I was inches away from a 120 mile an hour head-on collision on the way home from work last night anyway this is all I'm going to do on this area for now I need to move over to the rest of the layout I'm going to get some more of this track plan glued down and work on track bed and risers in this area here well the end of the day has caught up with me and this is all I've been able to accomplish today actually I think I'm fairly happy with the progress I wasn't able to get this bit of paper glued down like I wanted to because there was some leveling necessary under here and that's still got to wait till tomorrow before it be hard enough to, to glue anything to yes I know there's about a two inch height difference there that's because the section I was working on the first couple of days is too high the legs need lowering by two inches so that is exactly a two inch step well there's this, there's this piece of riser that goes in there through the wall and then there's a two inch step well, I've just got back here on Thursday morning and I see there's some notes left for me apparently these two lines in here are supposed to be additional tracks which are going to head under this riser here I thought that was someone just scribbling on the plan because obviously this is way too sharp I can fix it there's plenty of room to have a gent more gentle curve but there's not going to be a lot of clearance here we're only going to have about one and a half inches of clearance which really isn't enough because they have that relatively short grade now I'm thinking I can move this turn out to here put a curve one in that gives about an extra 18 inches on this purple grade and that could well be significant I've got to do some more calculations and then make a phone call and get permission to make whatever changes I deem necessary well it seems once again time has caught up with me again today but not before I got virtually all the track laid on this peninsula here there's a few more bits that I can't do just yet I've got the track print for the main line glued down the front the yard will eventually get a continuous sheet of rubber instead of individual track bed which is why I've cut it out so that once I've put the rubber down I can glue the track diagram back down on top of it and I will still have the guidelines to follow but that will be a task for tomorrow so I'm going to sign off now and go home well, I've just got here on Friday morning 
and the area that I filled is nice and hard so I can now continue and don't have to improvise anymore. So first order of business today is to get the foam rubber down under the yard and then I'll glue the track plan down on top of it and that will give me more than enough track to work on, way more than I can do in one day. Well it's around six o'clock and time again has caught up with me. This is how far I got today. As you can see, all the road bed is in right up to the end. I've got most of the main line track in the front and one end of the yard finished. So Monday I will work on the other half of the yard. Until then, bye for now.